Today, I want to go over a new program called Grackle. Grackle is an accessibility add-on software that you can use to make any Google uh, document that you create accessible. This includes Google Docs, Google Sheets, um, Google Slides, so any of the big three programs you can make it accessible and they're working on a plugin for Google Drive as well. Basically, Grackle is a way to create documents that are more accessible for students who use screen reader technology. It can also help ensure that your document has better readability by using proper headings as well as good contrast ratios for your fonts. So what I'm going to first show is how to set up Grackle for a Google application. In this case, I'm going to be using Google Docs. You could do the, these same steps with Google Sheets or Google Slides as well. But again, I'm going to use Google Docs to demo. So the first thing we can do here is I've opened up a Google Doc. And what I want to do is call your attention to the add-ons option, which is on the top over here. When you click on add-ons, you can click on get add-ons. Grackle is actually one of the add-ons that you're able to get. When you click on Grackle, what will happen is you can install the plugin. So I'm going to click continue to install, and it's actually going to connect to my um, St. Mary's, so I'm going to do the, my, my St. Mary's email, and it's going to ask if, I, if it can access uh, different things for my document. I'm going to say OK, and then Grackle is going to set up. And we'll just give it a second here, and it says Grackle's been installed. And it's ready to go. So I can find Grackle in my add-ons and I could click launch to launch the application. So again that is how you can set up Grackle and you can use this process for each of the Google Slides, Google Docs, and Google Sheet applications. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you a couple different tools built into Grackle to help you check the accessibility of your document and to be able to use some of the features built in to uh, Google Docs as well to that, that are there for accessibility. So the first thing I want to do now that I'm in my document is I want to run Grackle. And the way I can run Grackle is just click on the add-ons button and click on Grackle Docs and now I'm going to click launch. So now that Grackle is running, you can see that it's checking the document and noting different things. So the first thing it says is document title is required and um, there is a title. So um, that is good. I think we will find later down here that my title does not have the best uh, font selection. Uh, because it's a very uh, difficult font to read with the white background. But we can tell that this is a title. You know that because it says title here. Now, um, what you can do if you have a heading or a subtitle, you kind of want to use these different elements if you're not writing normal text uh, to differentiate what you are writing. This helps the screen reader know what is the title in the document for someone who is using screen reading software. And it also on the left here, you can see Google Docs does a nice job of breaking down the heading structure based on um, the heading level that you're using. Um, so that, that can be helpful too for people who are trying to figure out where things are. So what I'm going to do right now though is look at the next option since this, this is uh, titled again as a title. So next one is document language should be specified. So our, we have specified the language as English. If it was not, it would go over how to do that. Um, and again, I guess I, I'll show you over here. Each of these, it kind of explains how you would go about that. Um, so it knows what the current title is. It's able to see that the setting is English. And now we're going to go to the images part. So the image does not have alternate text. So I added in this cute image of a pug. And there's no alternate text for this image. So without alternate text, what that means is that if someone with a screen reader is trying to access this document, they're not going to know any idea of what this image is. Conversely, you may sometimes have a 
image that passes this alt text uh, check, but the alt text may just say something like JPEG 5, but that's not at all descriptive of what the image actually is. So I am going to show you how to add alt text to this image, which will help um, people who are using screen reading technology know what the image is trying to convey. So the way we can do this is if you have a PC, you will right click on the image. If you have a Mac like me, you will hold down the control key and click on the image. You are looking for an option toward the bottom um, of that menu that pops up that says alt text. When you click it, you'll see it says title and description. You can add a title and a description. The key point to note here is that you want your alt text to be brief and succinct. You really only want to use maybe 120 characters max. This is because when the screen reader reads the alt text, there are no breaks or pauses. So the person using the screen reader cannot stop the alt text from being read and you can't really go back from like one sentence to the other. It will just either play the, the very beginning or you skip it. You can't, there's no other options there. In addition, you have two fields that you want to fill out called title and description. When I look at these, it's reminding me as well, it's good to know that you don't need to write picture or anything um, trying to convey that it's a photo because it, the alt text automatically on screen reading software is going to let the user know that it is a picture because it's going to say alt text. So that's their cue that this is an image. And then in addition, you have title and description. So these will both be read by the screen reader software as well. So for the title, you may want to say something like, I can say here, dog, and then I could say picture, you know, pug um, laying down, smiling. So you want something short that kind of conveys whatever that image is. And then when you finish, you can click the OK button. So that's how you can kind of convey what that image is. I have, I think in this document, uh, there's a couple other images which I kind of forgot about, but uh, this program, Grackle, can help me find them. So I can locate, I can click over here on the, the first one up here we just did. Then there's one down here about my city certification. So I can just call this, if I go back to alt text, so I can call this city um, and I can just say certificate completion of city course. And then I think there's one more. Um, I think this is the class list of the city course. So again, I'll go to alt text, I'll say, city but i don't want to just say what it, i'm going to say uh, city in depth and then i'm just going to say explanation list of completed city courses so now each image has been labeled so what i can then do now that i've labeled all of them is i can go back to the top of the document and i can click the recheck option this recheck option will allow me to recheck the document and we should get now a check mark for the images since we fixed that. So we can go in over here looking like drawings have alternate text. So that's another one that it checks for is if you have any drawings. Equations should be described. So if you have any equations in your Google Doc, it will, it will remind you to try and describe those and add alt text to them because uh, math equations normally cannot be read by screen reading software as well. Um, and then looking at images that may need to be downsampled to reduce um, file size, it looks for that. Um, so now we're in the headings option. Headings should be used. We have headings. Um, there are some here I think that are empty. Um, so here we can just basically, this is a heading level one that's just empty. So we could turn this back into normal text. And I can just click update and now it's normal text. Um, and I think there are a lot of these that are norm that, that need to be uh, changed. One of the most common errors you'll see on websites as well, actually, is empty headings. It's very common for people to forget. They have a heading, let's say, that they leave, like I just did here with all of these, and they go through and they forget. So then um, when the screen reader tries to read what's in the heading, 
there's actually nothing there. And so that becomes an issue because if you have a lot of them like I just do in this document, what would happen is the screen reader would be trying to, to say if there's information that can't be read when really it's there's no information. And so that can be um, confusing for um, someone using screen reading software because they don't they don't know that there's really no content there. So I think I have re uh, you know done all the headings. So I'm going to click the recheck button. And when it rechecks, we'll see here. I think there's only two now. So we'll get these last two and last two. And then we'll do a recheck. So now all the headings have been fixed there, so there's no more empty headings. We can see that we have the full check box and there's no errors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to update this to a heading level one. So what's happening here is that we're having the heading levels be flagged for an accessibility issue. This is because the heading level on the top of the document is the title. Unfortunately, title is kind of misleading because in most PDFs and uh, particularly websites, there, are, there is no title option. So this title is sort of read as a paragraph, even though when I click on it, it says title, it's not really going to be able to translate that well as a real heading. The real headings are one, two, three that we see here. Um, and sometimes on like a web on a web page, you might have four, five, six as well. So what I'm going to do, and what I'm recommending to you, is instead of using the title heading, to use the level one heading. And so I am going to make this a level one heading. And then what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go through this document and make the other headings level two headings. So you'll see table of contents, level two. We'll go to abstract. I'm gonna make this instead of a, a heading one, I'm gonna make this a heading two. Um, and then I'm going to go to um, the next one here and make this a, a heading two. So now that I've went through the document and we've made these changes, we can then recheck it. And when I click the recheck button, we should see a lot of these errors disappear. And we can see now that all of them are checking out and we have a full check, but we can notice that there's a couple errors that pop up on the side here because um, these are just the empty heading levels uh, that I mentioned are very common with uh, documents that have had some changes occur. Um, it's common for that to, to happen. Uh, but I think we only have two, so they should be gone pretty quick. Let's do one more recheck and see. And now all the heading levels should be good. And we can see on here that we have no heading level issues. So now all the headings have been fixed and corrected. And we can go look at these two tables that I have in the appendixes and how we can ensure that they are read properly by screen reading software. Now, looking at this first table, what we can note here is that we don't have any empty cells. Um, so every cell has text in it. So that is um, why we get a check mark there. And we also have a check mark because the use of the merge cell is not recommended. So we're not merging cells together. Um, each, each cell is separate. So both of those things give us those two check marks. But that top check mark is looking at how the screen reader is going to actually read the table. I, I see this is the one that has the issue. Table must be tagged or marked as uh, table uh, as layout tables. I'm going to click on it. It's going to give me more description. And what I'm going to do is you can see this little locate option will let you locate what it's looking at. I'm going to click the tag option. This will let me automatically tag. It's gonna open up the tag table option um, in, in Google. And we can set up how we're going to tag this table. So um, we wanna mark, uh, we wanna mark first row as header. So this is the header for this table. Other tables might have a column as a header as well. 
We do not. We just have a header, you know, you know, for this table. So you can see it's going to read this out loud. That's the header that's going to repeat. So if you were to click in the second line and, you know, hypothetically, you, you know, you're you're using screen reading software to hear where where you're at and you're relying on that, you want it to read out, you know, this is the second reminder column and then tell you which um, which box you're in, and then it's going to read that box. So that's how someone using screen, screen reading software would interact with the program. Um, so looking at that, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to click Update, and it's going to update that. And then what we can actually do is go to the next one. So I'm going to locate the second table in Appendix B. I'm going to click the tag button again, and we're going to go take a look at this one. I think it's very similar. Again, we're just looking to mark um, first row as header. We don't have a column header in this particular one. Um, you know, obviously, you may make a table where you want a column header as well, and then you just check that one off and you'd make it. I will check it here so you can see, but this is not, um, you know, actually. Uh, a, a, a header column. So I'm going to uncheck that. But that's how it would look. It would just show you what which part it's going to be reading. And we can click update. And now it will read it, um, you know, well. Again, something to kind of note with this is that, that the two uh, presets really are reading the row header and the column header. If you have more complex tables, they can be very difficult to tag. So I really recommend using simple row and column header tables. Sometimes it, you may you may encounter uh, more complex tables that you might not be able to, to do that on, on your own, but that's you know how you can probably tag at least 90% of the tables that you'll see. So what I'm going to do here is click recheck and we should get a clear on the on this uh, option and we do. So then I'm going to uh, click on that to uh, make it go away. We can then look at our landmarks real fast. So we have headers and footers should be used. I did not use footers. Um, I only used headers for the, the number. I could have used footers. It's just recommended. It's not necessary. That's why you kind of see it's like a, a different type of check. We have footers and IDs and alt text. So those are being used. Um, but this has no, no footer. So that, that's why it doesn't show up. And then lists um, should be used where appropriate. Uh, there are two lists detected, so we can see where those lists are. We can we could do this as a list. I think it, it, it's actually noting this is a list because we're using bullets. So this little bullet sign here, um, I went in and actually, you know, I used the format uh, bullet column. So that makes the bullets. I know sometimes people will go into special characters or other ways of making a list, you really want to use the option that is uh, pre-formatted because that will convey to the screen reader exactly what you're trying to convey. The next option here, if I go to locate, is another list. Uh, this is a number list, and I use the number list. Um, again, you know, you just want to use the set options that come uh, with Google Docs. That way, um, it's able to convey that to the screen reader. So we've covered the landmarks options. I'm just going to look at the content ones now. So we'll see documents should not contain unsupported content. We have no unsupported content. Everything's recognized. High color contrast should be used. Um, in this particular case, it's not catching the, the color contrast. It's not noting that this, this uh, color doesn't really work. So I'm just going to make this black. Um, in this case, it did not note that. So that's something to kind of just keep in mind. It might not always catch it, um, but it does try and look for color contrast. There's another program that's really good at cat catching color uh, contrast, and I will make um, a video of that. It's a free program. You can download, check the color contrast of your documents. It can be really helpful. So this is just basically saying that, that, that centered alignment is not recommended uh, for non-heading text. It, again, it doesn't specifically affect the screen reading. Uh, I do have some of those that I'm just going to leave in for right now, but you could always fix that. Um, and then lengthy paragraphs should be avoided, which we don't have, and links should be interactive. Again, when it comes to links uh, being uh, oh, links being informative, to me, this is one that's not informative. 
So if I wanted to make this link a little bit more succinct, rather than writing out the whole link, what I could do is type in Mac Rumors and then just copy this link. Um, and then or I'm just going to cut it in this case. I can, I can right click or control click and go to link. I can put in the link. And now um, it's a little bit, it looks a little more succinct. Again, this also labels what the uh, link is. You'll find sometimes, again, when you're, um, if you're using screen reading software, you really want the link to be really clear of where you're going because otherwise uh, you don't know what that is. So Mac Rumors kind of describes, you know, a Mac website for speculating on new products. But at the same time, you know, if you're going somewhere like St. Mary's, you know, backslash 1224, that doesn't tell you anything. But if you say, you know, St. Mary's uh, English department uh, uh, class requirements, that gives you more information. So you really want to provide that extra level of information when it comes to, uh, you know, what the actual website link is, uh, is, is taking the person to, um, especially for screen reader users, because they're not going to get much information out of a random website link unless it's more descriptive. So that kind of covers this, these options here. So again, we could do the recheck and I think we're going to pass everything and we, it's almost done rechecking. Let's see here. Yep. We check, we passed everything. So the next thing I want to show you is let's say we finish this and we want to make an accessible document. Well, with, you know, Google, you could always do, the download as PDF option, but that's not an accessible PDF per se. Um, that is really just a, a, a straight download of, of, of the Google Doc. Grackle has a really specific um, export where they will make sure that it's an accessible PDF, really taking into account all the different options that you've included. You can see some of the options here. So what we are going to do, uh, is start the uh, download and we're going to have it process this as an accessible um, PDF. So we're just going to give it a second and it's going to make an accessible PDF for us. So I'm going to download this PDF. It's just going to take a second. So I'm just going to click view this PDF over here and we're going to have it view. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the download button. So I download this uh, PDF. And then the last step here, we have it opened in preview. So I'm going to go inside the table now that, that, we, that we're in. You are currently on a cell inside of a table. To navigate the cells within this table, press control, option, and then up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, or right arrow. Second reminder, column two, row one, column two, row one. So it's you telling me I'm in the second reminder. reminder. Column three, row one, column three, row one. So it's you telling me the column and the, and the row the where I am. To navigate. Second, first one, B, assignment name has been posted. Start as soon so you don't have to stress. You can do it. Column one, row two. And it you tells me it's column cell, one, row two. two. Third, set, first, and second, column first one reminder. is first column reminder. One, row one, column one, first reminder, B, assignment name, B, assignment name is live and now is a great time to start. So, so you can so see. Relax. Column one, row three. You are currently on a cell inside of a table. To navigate the cells within this table, press Control, Option, and then up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, or right arrow. To exit this table, press Control, Up, B. First remind, second reminder, column two, row one, column two, row one. Over 50% of your class has finished assignment name. Complete it now so you don't have to stress later. You got this, column two, row two. So you can you see- on a cell inside of a table. To navigate the cells within this table, press Control, Option, and then up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, or right arrow. To exit this table, press Control, Option, Shift, up arrow. So you can see how I could navigate the table and using the heading levels in the document, how that can be beneficial. Um, I hope that that is helpful and that you can use Grackle when you're creating uh, PDFs, maybe for your course syllabus or things like that to help ensure that they are accessible for students who are using a screen reader. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.